Hey, hey, what is up, everybody? This is Dragon Durant of the Yasuhiro 0088, and we are about to embark on another journey in Horizon Exploration. Welcome, everyone. We're going to be taking a quick little moment to do a recap after we do party introductions, but tonight should be very interesting. There was a bit of conflict at the end of our last session. The party seemed to be a little split across their moral grounds and well we're gonna see how things progress today so with that let's get ready dropping down here let's see if i remember how i had set all this up and there we go and well bam all right party members are you there hey no no, just <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> oh, you're not, huh? I have a convenient way of just nuking you right now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all right, how are we all doing today? Doing yeehaw. well. Perfect, perfect. You're doing yeehaw? What is that? Please describe that. Uh, you know. I'm riding a horse at the present time. Very cowboy at the moment. Yeah, very yeah. space cowboy, you know? You gotta beep up and you gotta haw your yees and you gotta do the <laughs> snipey things that maxine does but let's uh let's Haw quickly your your okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just like uh, crossing all your t's and dotting your i's you gotta haw your e's <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well let's jump into it we'll kick off our party introductions as we do so at the top sam stonewell played by peter hey everybody peter playing sam stonewell and I might be in a bit of trouble, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We have Maxine Beck, played by Sean. How's it going? I'm Sean. I'm also as BL, and I'm playing Maxine Beck, and I am already standing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the trend here is uh, Maxine likes to pace at the end of her sessions, or end of our sessions, because uh, <laughs> shit goes are you, down. Are you already standing? Did you start standing on this session? Yeah. <laughs> Preemptively standing. Yep, they're getting ready. They're getting their heart rate pumped, and let's go. Do you remember, like, the Bugs Bunny scene where they, like, pace a hole in the ground? You know, like... <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, next up, Caden Lumen, played by Calvin. Hello, Calvin. I never know what to say. I'm Calvin. I'm like, Dude, you I'm can't you can't keep saying every session. I don't know what to say. Think of something. I need to write down my cue cards, get my teleprompter going. You know, I just I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Just go with it. Just go with it. I'm Caden. Who, who is? My counter has been really taking a hit recently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have oh, Dario. Sorry, I mean... Oh, sorry. We have Dario Cortez, played by Sergio. Hey, everyone, it's Dario Cortez. If Kate is, uh, doesn't have anything to say, we're best friends in the group. So I'll speak for us together. Nice. <laughs> and, la and last up, Koji Akiyama, played by Corey. Hello, hello. I'm Corey playing Koji Akiyama, and I have a shotgun now. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Yeah, you oh, were yeah. fawning over it last time. I was just thinking, it's been a, a few episodes now since Koji's punched something. Yeah, he was so ready for it last time. It didn't happen. We just need to get him slugs shaped like fists. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man, fist delivery. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go into a brief little recap of last time and on our previous episodes of Horizon Exploration. The party in the first major city that they have encountered on Aurora Green since starting this campaign. In Fontaine, they had visited the Central Library District. They had met a prominent man of the leadership of the city, Jack Finnegan. And through conversation with him, uh, they decided, well, they were hoping for some more information on the Horizon Core. Didn't quite find anything concrete. So next up, they decided to head over to Grimes' shop where they sought out a John Grimes, which they had met on the roadside when they initially were entering the city and had ran out of some fuel. John was kind enough to give them some fuel to make it into the city, and Calvin, or Caden, uh, excuse me, uh, said they should go pay him a visit. Maybe he knows some people. Uh, maybe they could he could help them out with some direction, maybe some tech that Maxine was looking for, some modifications. 
but John wasn't available at the time. He wasn't there. He was out doing a delivery, and one of his employees, one of his assistants, uh, Gina, I believe is the name I had given her. Yes. And Gina had voiced that there was some business that uh, had some trouble, and this was dealing with the Narrow Trade Company, which the party decided to take on this little request in hopes of lending a hand while they waited for John's return and made their way over to Narrow Trade Company, where after getting some disguises and Sam entering as a, what was it? Travel blogger, right? Uh, yep. Live streaming to the universe. And yes, yeah, successfully made his way in. Whereas the other party members, uh, Koji, was keeping an eye out outside, ready to charge in as cavalry if needed, if things went south. And Maxine, Kate, and Dario went in as a trio of... Gosh, what was the name that you guys had given yourselves? It was Octurus, Octurus yes. Octurus. So a little kind of mercenary company, I think the description that Caden had given is that they are hired to resolve certain unresolved business. <laughs> and, well, they were met by a Mr. Cooper, which had come down to meet them and discuss a bit of what this business was all about and what was left outstanding as the Narrow Trade Company, according to their records, had stated, had shown that the transaction had been completed. But after some conversation and a little one-on-one -on -one with Maxine, who used a bit of her dynasty lingo to make herself known to Mr. Cooper, uh, where she stands in the grand order of things, managed to get some information out of Mr. Cooper, and Mr. Cooper in turn had pr uh, promised or had voiced that they would be willing to assist their efforts if they could help resolve this transaction that was allegedly still pending their payment. So with that, the party had returned back to Grimes' shop to conclude the business that... Well, to conclude their business. And in that process, Sam had... Well, <laughs> Sam... Sam... How would you describe your intentions of what you had done? Uh, good. Good. <laughs> so, so while Gina was collecting the hardware uh, that housed the information that was necessary to close the transaction, Sam, with good intentions, wanted to preserve the data. And in that process, uh, decided to make an attempt to knock out Gina, <laughs> to gain the hard drives, to make a copy. But that, unfor that unfortunately did not play out how uh, he had hoped and Gina had run out to the rest of the group with uh, with John there and in a panic ex ex exasperated uh, claimed that Sam had attacked her tried to hit her and failed fake news, <laughs> fake <False>. news. <laughs> <laughs> but with that the party had rushed in uh, John had pulled out the shotgun that he kept hidden behind his office desk and taken a shot, not only at Sam, but as Koji barged in, tried to take a shot at Koji's imposing form. And Koji, being the big, quick fellow that he is, managed to push the weapon away, pull John up by his throat, pin him up against the wall, and even threw him across the room, which at that point, John had... John had told everyone to get out. The business is closed as he attempted to collect himself. But the party outside of Grimes' shop near the vehicle, there was a crowd that was gathering that Maxine tried to disperse while Caden and Dario and Sam tried to talk and understand what just happened. And Koji, being the good fellow he is, also tried to help Maxine to disperse the crowd, but in a more imposing way with shotgun pointed to <laughs> where <laughs> caused a little bit of a panic in the surrounding area but with that let's continue with the party again outside still in the midst of trying to understand what happened what uh what are they going to do one of their 
close leads or close uh, acquaintances within Fontaine has just closed his doors for the day. Speaking of the day, the day is also coming near its end as the skies are have been getting darker. You guys have done quite a lot in your day, first day within Fontaine. But yeah, it is pushing late in the day and you we are do all there. Have the, I mean, the hard drive with all the data. Correct, because Caden had cast suggestion on Sam and Koji trying to deter the situation and told them to get out. And Sam, I think you had a nat one. Yep. Yep. Uh, question on suggestion, when it happens to my character, me, do I think it's my idea that it happens or do I know that I'm being compelled? I think you are aware after, but not during. Okay. There are, there are certain spells that specifically call out whether you are aware of it or not. I don't think suggestion like Charm, is one. I think Charm person, I think they're aware of it. After. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let me take a quick gander at suggestion. No, it doesn't say that you know. So, Sam, you were just compelled to take his word. Was a good idea. You got up so. promptly and you walked right out, pulling the cords as Gina hadn't quite finished detaching everything. And you have a hard drive in your hand or a drive in your hand that has some dangling uh, cables attached to it. Uh, well, everyone, I would say this was a success. Is that, is that really what you would say? Um, I was trying to get this hard drive, at least make a copy, but we've got the actual thing here. Do you know, we could have just asked. We were trying, I don't know about you guys, but I was planning to make a copy to begin with. We didn't. That was my plan as well. You just had yep. to talk to us, Sam. Hell, were you going to make a copy? We would. She was giving us a copy of the data. We just had to copy the copy. Well, we don't want a copy. We uh, our job was to take all of it. She was. She was. Well, she was our job us the original deleted. files. Sorry, she was giving us the original files. That's what she was doing in the office. I look at the hard drive I'm holding. I put it down. I look at the group. Oh, you can see I probably overstepped here. Sam, uh, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I feel like in the future, any types of decisions like this where it puts either of us in danger is something that we had to talk about. You obviously understand that we have a person who we thought was our friend. We now have made a, has an enemy in John. You might not be an enemy yet, but we'll have to work hard to earn his trust again. Absolutely. Which I think we can do by resolving this issue from him, and we may... It may not fix everything, but we may need to offer him more than his share of what he should get from this <laughs> arrangement. It feels a little bit like bribery, but... Is that a problem? You think this no, is a problem that money can solve? It's a problem that money can't necessarily solve, but money might uh, smooth the rough edges so it'd be easier to fix later. Why are we even trying to fix this? Aren't there like a because billion other mechanics in the city? Know. Can't we just like look some people up? <sighs> It could, but there's it's probably, probably a million other places we could go. But uh, yeah, we, we have we we had the thing. We we had we were there. Like if none of this had happened, we could have like resolved our issues that we went to John for and just moved on. You know, much as I agree, Caden, I think we're repeating ourselves at this point. Yes. But uh, Sam, I don't know what your opinion on friendship is but uh i mean i'm sure with even with everything going on you heard koji yelling in there i mean i don't think it gets more genuine than that 
So, is Koji keep that in mind in the future. What's up? You, Koji's out here with us, or did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm no, out here with you guys. There. I think we're all together. You yeah. guys are all in proximity, yeah. So just keep that in mind, whatever. So that might mean to you. As a group, what's our next steps? I feel like we have what we came for. We can resolve this issue for John, and there was a five million credit payment in, in it for us, so we can still do that. Whether ten. we well, it was ten, but five went to John, so yeah, he's not gonna net. Yeah. I would say let's make sure we get the actual payment first. Yeah, so we can get this resolved, and then we have to decide whether we care to uh, continue working with John or not. And if we want to try and fix this. It might be something to look into once uh, things have calmed down a bit around here. I think... Uh, That's why I think if we can come back with the issue resolved, the five mil in hand, and uh, offer an heartfelt apology along with a $5 million payout or more, it may uh, help the situation. I agree. It's the least we can do. I hold up the hard drive, so what, should I hold on to this? We'll, return, well, let's pull the data off we need it, delete the data from that drive, so leave the other stuff on it, he'll need that back when we're done, but let's at least resolve this issue for... Uh, for John, like we said we would. Now, if there were a copy of this that any of us were in possession of, that should not enter the narrow trade company building. Oh, or the Omninet, really. Hmm. I it's... agree. Let's uh, put it in the vehicle. I don't. It feels like it's not a very secure location. Like. I got a long-term location we could put it after, but we'd have to get out of town. Like, there's no- I don't know anywhere in town. Vehicle's secure with me, in it. We can't just leave you in the car all the time, though. Yeah, we can, uh, keep it at one of those underground storages when we're not with it, if we're worried about it. Okay, yeah, it's fair. So let's- let's go resolve this issue for John, then. Let's head back to the narrow company. Oh, wait, let's copy this data first and, like, put it on a separate drive. Oh. We should probably find somewhere less public to talk about this also. And I'm not touching any copies because No. Uh, I don't I don't trust any of my equipment. I'll need someone's help, but I can I can hold on to it. Well, I mean, are you... While you guys are talking, uh Caden, and you mentioned the discussing this in kind of a public space. Though the other pedestrians nearby and shop people are have dispersed with the help of Maxine and Koji. There are still occasional prying eyes that you spot from a safe distance. Let's uh, let's get out. Did we end up getting a place to stay? I forget. We did, right? It's been a while. Did we have like a? Any... Not yet. I don't think. I don't think, I think we, did. we did. Okay. No. Never mind, we don't have a place to stay then. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to the vehicle, vehicle, and we'll deal with this drive thing, and we'll sort everything out. While we're driving, uh, GM, can I look on my Omni device to see of any uh, hotels? Let's say swanky hotels in the area. <laughs> Is there a Motel Nine? <laughs> so <laughs> a Hazy Eight? No. You look for a few places that you might be able to stay, and you're going to find uh, quite a few hits within Fontaine. You find that there are many locations within the kind of inner city of Fontaine that act as places to stay of varying sizes, some of them looking much more luxurious, some of them looking pretty, pretty simple and basic. Uh, for the quality of the city. And then you also find that there are some locations near the border of the city as well that are popping up, which are out kind of where the outer perimeter of the city will be. And these are more kind of residential areas 
that from the looks of it, but there are a few locations, uh, plenty of locations, but a few of them that are scattered about here as well. Again, part of the outer kind of homes. Kind of a filtering in the searches is, can I see if there's any that like, let's say like host for people of like the elite or like celebrities or just more high class. Want a five star and up only? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for a six star at this rate. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're looking for like a very kind of high end location, uh, the most expensive ones that you're finding are actually located up near the Fontaine Advent District, which is kind of north center of the city. If you're looking for something more upper mid range, then the central kind of Fontaine proper in the central radius seems to have plenty of locations. The business district, which you guys are currently at, don't seem to have a whole lot, but there are some locations here as well. Oh, I don't need anything uh, too fancy. Just a roof over my head. Come on, Sam. I don't need anything too fancy either. Oh, guys, we're, we've never, I've never been in the city before. Like, this could be our city, only. But it's been a while. But you... imagine it, living, like, you know, getting a chance to do, you know, to do something that we haven't had a chance to, instead of sleeping on caves and on dirt, <laughs> like we've been the past couple of weeks. It's <laughs> expensive. I don't really have the, the money for that. Sam stretches and you hear like bones crack. He's <laughs> <laughs> mm. made up a point. Uh, it could use for a soft bed. I mean, where I come from is pretty, uh, I think you could call it rural almost. I mean, compared to a city like this, I bet, uh, um, shoot, I bet they got some nice beds. Yeah, I've been living it pretty rough uh, the last few years. Well, you know what? Let's go do it. Uh, let's live a little tonight. Um, how are we afford? We're getting a five million payout, but how much? It sounds like it's gonna be really expensive. I kind of do a side eye at Koji. Koji's just been admiring his shotgun the entirety of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> a city like this probably takes credit. Just tell them we're good for it, and when we get paid, we pay them after. Uh. Well, we can get paid before we go to the place. My issue is, is it going to be more than five? I, I, I honestly, how much does a, how much does, I don't, I don't know how much, the, how much does it cost, you know? <laughs> I talk, uh, I kind of look at Koji. Koji, aren't you tired of sleeping on the floor? Don't you want to sleep in a night's bed like you're used to? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just sleeping in beds. See? Fuck. Hey. God. Got some nice food, too. Drinks. <laughs> oh. I actually ate well, to be honest. You said food? Yeah, Sam and Koji went to a nice restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> True. And Dragon, would Akiyama have any, like, hotels or anything in this area? Would Ooh, Akiyama it? have hotels in this area? That is a great question. The Akiyama family... I'm gonna... I'm gonna make a little roll here. Odds are... Akiyama's, most of Akiyama's resources are actually spent closer. But, Koji, you think that it would be possible for Akiyama to have some sort of an establishment, but you're none the wiser at the moment. Alright. I, uh, uh, I don't know the exact, like, history or any shit, but, like... Maybe try looking up, see if my family's got any hotels around here. Could probably get in with just my face at that point. Kind of talking to Dario. Well, that's all the more reason then. I mean, I, I put in, I try to search for Akiyama Hotel. Okay. Let's see if there's any like location uh, near us. All right, you do a quick little search, uh, adjusting your search criteria and adding the keywords for Akiyama. And within Fontaine, you do get a hit. 
They're in the admin district. There is what looks to be kind of a, a high rise uh, based on the images that you are able to find of a Akiyama named hotel. Kind of uh, raise my Omni device to um, to the group, like in general in the car, or I guess where we're at. Well, looks like we have an inn right here. Um, you have many stars? Let's try to look at it. Does it look like it has uh, good reviews? <laughs> it's 4.2. <laughs> 4.2. Rough. <laughs> uh, well, that answers the question. I'm, I'm assuming with the the prince of the Akiyama, it's, uh, you know, we'll be able to sit in pretty nicely then. And don't you think so, Kaden? I think price wouldn't be as much of an issue. Oh. Uh sure we could try it it would be a good idea to have a place to work out of while we're in town you just do the work <laughs> well, whatever <laughs> uh so do we want to head to resolve this with the narrow trade company first or do we want to head to our lodgings We'll probably resolve there, right? Okay. Get everything all squared uh, up. Can somebody just help me copy this data then quickly? As you guys are looking about, or at least those that are idle looking about, uh, the shops nearby do seem to be closing. Um, it's getting just late. In it is late. Full, uh, disclosure, should somebody call this Akiyama Hotel first? Let them know that Koji's coming. Maybe they'll make it nice when we get there. Nah, I like to fuck with them. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, can someone help me copy this data? I, 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 I point at the hard drive because uh, Sam still has it, I think, right? I uh, reach out with the hard drive, hand it over. We oh, have a Omni device. I, uh, I think we said uh, to keep it off Omni devices. Shit. Uh, how do we copy data with an Omni device? Do we have a. Uh... Do we need to go to like a print shop or something like that? Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna go old school. Let's see if we can find some old school stuff. Uh, uh, we're in the right library. Oh, they're gonna close though. They're closing, aren't they? Shit, this might be a tomorrow thing. Well, yep. I mean, surely we can copy it over to a device and just I don't know, keep it in uh, Starship mode or something. <laughs> Starship mode. Yeah, it's possible. Early. Yeah, it might work. I mean, uh, Kane, are you ever even going to use your Omni device, or? Um, I looked at it. That's about all I've done with it. I added some contacts, I think. That's about it. Because unless we want to, you know, get a burner or something. Okay, 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 okay. We'll still, we'll, we'll, like, Dummy up my, my, my Omni device in here so it doesn't connect anything. We'll copy the data over. We'll make another copy to something else that's not an Omni device. Then we can factory reset my, my, my Omni thing because all I have is in contacts if we can just re add I, I really don't have anything else on here. So, real quick, what I heard was you're going to put your device effectively in offline mode. Yeah. You're going to transfer the data to it. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna factory reset it? No, I gotta transfer to someone else. I gotta find someone else to store it. I guess we can store. I'll leave it in like offline mode for now. We'll keep it stored on there. But realistically, if I'm ever gonna use this thing, which I don't know if I will, I do need to find someone else to put it. But for now, it can stay on there. I just won't factory reset. I'll just leave it in like offline mode. Okay. Well, as you take a look at the device, the the drive that Sam passed over to you, I need you to give me a science roll. Oh boy, uh, do I? Because I, I have technically proficiency because it's Arcana, but I don't know how to work. These you things. don't have science, you have Arcana, so it's non proficiency. So give okay, me. So generally, you said it was. This... Okay, that's yep, it's okay. They're interchangeable. Yep, it's just a question of do you have proficiency? Kind of like a... science is kind of like an Arcana, but like for what is it? Um, thieves' tools, like that kind of an idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So just a regular roll, no disadvantage. Yeah, so what is it? Um, it would be intelligence, right? You just give me an intelligence mm -hmm. check, and that should do it. 
This is not gonna go well, guys, but we'll, uh, <laughs> why am I doing this? <laughs> okay, where's my buttons? Is this now disadvantage? Well, I like my thing's not like I literally I have it open and I can't actually interact with Foundry right now. It's like not working. Can you guys hear me? I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we can, can hear you. you. Yep. But it's not my internet. Hello. Hello. Oh, I see. So you're trying to. I just I'm having issues with just like even the main page right now. I've just got if you just hit in, it's probably going there's another pop up to ask if you want to do saving throw a check, right? No, that wasn't it. So like I went to open the thing and it wasn't working, and then I sort of refreshed the page, and now I just have the black screen and it's not pulling up the actual boundary oh. thing. I see you all. Actually, you're you just got removed from the campaign, so you're uh, wait, you're the campaign completely. No, yeah. Like, well, no, no. Like <laughs> I, I see you disconnected. So try refreshing again. I just have this black screen. If someone rolls, I, I can tell you what my... Well, actually, I don't remember what my modifier is. Shit, I think it's a plus one or two I have. No, no I'm pretty low on intelligence. All right, you're back in the campaign. Try it again. I still have a black screen on my end. Huh. Weird. Everyone else, uh, if you refresh, are you getting a black screen? Or is you getting in? No, uh, we should try. Oh, I think I got in finally. Yeah, I see you guys leaving and coming back, so... Looks like you guys are able to get onto the okay, now, server. Now I think I'm good. Okay, so just a regular. Oh, I have the black screen now. I have the yeah. Refresh gave me a black screen. Hmm. Oh, so, no, it's getting out loading. It, it takes a few seconds to load. Mine took a while. Was... Wow. Well, I did not do well. <laughs> First roll of the night, and already a nat one. You guys are nuts. Hello, yeah. Like this is in character. <laughs> yeah, we all roll one to twenties. <laughs> yeah, so oddly appropriate because Caden, you're already pretty new to all this new tech gadgetry. You didn't have this luxury when in your hometown, and obviously when you were out hiding, you were pretty uh, detached from a lot of it as well. But yeah, you're looking at your Omni device. You're looking at these wires that uh, got ripped out from the terminal that Gina was working on that Sam pulled out, and you're just like, how do these wires connect to the Omni device? And you guys are watching Caden struggling hard he plugs in a usb usb device uh cord wrong way turns it around somehow still the wrong way <laughs> yep <laughs> uh anyway do you know how these things work i i imagine i'm just in the driver's seat occasionally glancing over being frustrated because i can't like actively help <laughs> um dario you're good, you're good with uh machines I could you uh, so. do this what was that? Dario, you're good with machines, yeah? Could you do this? Taking a look at it. You can put it on my Omni device, I just know how to work the damn thing. <laughs> Dario takes the um, hard drive and the um, and Caden's Omni device in his hand. Okay, give me a science roll as well. Arcana, right? For you, science. Yeah, Arcana is science. Yeah, I, I'm... Dario. Dar only takes it apart before he puts it back together. <laughs> <laughs> I must know from the ground up. Ah, not that terrible. Well, right? uh, eight. An eight. All right. With the eight, you also struggle to try to figure out how to connect this drive to the Omni device. Uh, I'm going to have you give me a history roll as well. <laughs> no, no, only going up from here, baby. Yeah, so you're also not very privy to connecting these external devices. Back home, you had proper cables to attach to like a terminal, but the drive itself, you haven't really had a need to connect a device directly to a drive. And kind of looking at it, you're wondering if they're even compatible kind of uh, flustered a little bit <sighs> sorry sorry everyone i mean someone know how to do this god damn it hands it why don't we just give them the the original because we want a copy it was the entire thing what this was about yeah. were we getting paid to not make a copy like destroy everything 
Yeah, technically, but they're being shady as hell. Do you think maybe we have to find a place that's open? I mean, maybe tomorrow to see if we get connected to, to something that we can take, uh, be able to read off the device? Use me, look for like a D squad. <laughs> something like that. But yeah, we can, uh, we can, I guess, figure it out tomorrow. It is getting late, so. We don't have to get back there tonight. And who's to say if they're even going to still be there tonight? That's all another fair point. And there's also not really a bonus for getting it done on today, so. I mean, if I was an executive, I'd be in the office maybe, what, two hours? Just Depends, but possibly. Be back, you know, in the shooting range or the gym or something. Executives are usually in the shooting range. Play some cosmic golf. That's because they're soft and aesthetic that they don't you know, do something practical and useful. Make themselves better. Okay, well, uh, I guess we head to uh, the Akiyama place yep. for the night. So as you are traveling, Maxine, you're hearing the scuffed attempts <laughs> in the back, and it frustrates you not being able to get your hands to try to take a closer look at it as you drive. But about... 20 minutes of this goes by for you to get to roughly the center uh, of Fontaine, taking the highways. And you make it over from the business district to the admin district, following the markers for... markers for uh, where the Akiyama building is. And when you get there, it is a kind of luminescent red and red and black hotel high rise and the logo of the Akiyamas can be seen at the upper area as it illuminates in the kind of night of the green aurora borealis on aurora green and you find a kind of dedicated parking spot uh, that leads underground you guys park and there is an elevator nearby that will take you to the lobby, or you can walk outside and enter the front doors. Koji will make for the front doors. Yeah, right, I'll follow Koji. All right, you all make it up to the front. The doors will kind of slide out of the way. And... As soon as, Koji, you enter the doors, you see that there are four attendants that seem to be waiting near the front, two on each side, and the one closest to you on the right steps forward and gives you a curt bow. Oh, it is uh, an honor to have you here, uh, Mr. Akiyama. We were not aware that you will be visiting us today. Yeah, I'm gonna need any kind of looks back at everybody. One, two, five rooms? Much food and drink you got as soon as possible. Uh, let me go make sure that we have rooms available. Are you looking for usual accommodations or uh, would you like something perhaps on the higher floors? Higher floors. I understand. Uh, please uh, come over here while I have one of our People take you to the VIP waiting room, and we will be with you all shortly. All right. I'm going Sorry. to follow. <laughs> that was, like, the most painless thing we've done ever. <laughs> <laughs> Dario, like, elbows Sam and, I guess, lowers his elbow so he doesn't hit him exactly in the head and, like, see? What did I tell you? Uh, well, the only about four attendees out. Seems kind of short for the... Koji? I kind of love the idea that if you didn't specify, you would just out. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the attendants will take you not to like the lobby area, but there is like a private business room, waiting room uh, further back, uh, behind, kind of left of the front desk lobby area. And there are kind of closed doors there that one of the attendants will put a little key card up against a sensor. Doors open and it's a beautiful lounge there's kind of there's a bar and a bartender there's several tables several tvs as well as um a one-way pane of glass that lets you see kind of the admin district in fontaine while the gentleman who spoke with you 
walked off over towards the front desk. Is there like a bar in this VIP waiting room? Yep, yeah, bar and bar a bartender. bartender. Koji's going right up to it. <laughs> I'm gonna go sit next to Koji. Bar night sounds like sweet. Right. Dario wants to look around to see if either in the lounge or somewhere, if, if there's any type of information about the Akiyami family. You know when you usually enter a business, it'll be oh, like the history. Oh. Yeah, about the history. <laughs> <laughs> the history of the, the family or the history of like the hotel. So business. probably serving the Akiyami family for 300 million years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dario, give me a perception as you kind of look around for some sort of you know, information. Ugh. Seven. Yeah, so as you're following kind of the group uh, being led to this VIP area, you're looking around and there's, you spot like a very nice water, uh, not a waterfall, a water fountain that is indoors. You see a lot of like television screens kind of lighten things up. There's ads playing on it. Uh, there's some beautiful scenery of the Akiyama homeworld that is depicted and these beaches and kind of coastal resident areas very kind of tropical getaway style looking uh scenery that is being depicted but at initial glance you're not spotting any sort of like wall of information or a plaque talking about talking uh, uh getting your interest and okay. koji and who else was going to the bar sam sam i went as well and kaden all right yeah i I'm I'm following along. Uh, though I specifically like I'm cased in the place, I'm looking for uh, anyone who stands out as suspicious, anyone who looks like they're keeping watch, looking for cameras. Okay, Maxine, I'm gonna have you also give me a perception roll. Is the VIP bar unintended? Like, is it a self serve thing? Or no, is there it's a there's a bartender. Okay, it's a fourteen. Fourteen. All right, Maxine, as you're walking and looking about as well you do find that there are plenty of cameras here uh both behind the lobby in the corners of every room that you've walked into and within the vip area you do also find that there are several cameras here in the corners and behind the bar counter as well as far as suspicious individuals go initially at a glance everyone seems to be kind of normal patrons uh, nobody overly stands out as being suspicious uh in within the vip area there are a couple of other individuals here as well but they seem to be more like business people one of them is wearing a very very nice suit another one is a couple uh, there's a older gentleman and a older female um, that are kind of sitting closely together enjoying a cocktail at one of the side tables and you see another man in kind of a back corner on a computer. <laughs> I was about to say, there's no suspicious hooded figures that clearly push some plot for it, right? There's no <laughs> man. Someone had an quest. <laughs> if I ever make overly there's obvious, <laughs> there's a plot. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and just make a couple notes here. I'm keeping my eyes out for just anyone who's burned horrifically, as usual. Okay, uh, Kaden, I'm gonna have you give me a perception as well. Sure. Uh, 18. 18. Looking around? No, you don't spot anybody who has burns. Hell, you don't... Since entering Fontaine, you've really not seen a whole lot of people with any sort of scarring whatsoever like people seem I there would be any but yeah the people it. here so far have seen unaffiliated with the embers for to, to your observations now as the others are kind of looking about and mulling behind koji and sam you guys walk right up to the bar as soon as you enter and the attendant kind of gives you a bow and walks out uh, thanking you all and mentioning again that we'll be back with uh, more information for your rooms shortly. The person behind the bar is going to see your approach. Ah, welcome to the Akiyama Hotel. What uh, can I get you all? 
Our um, value gift. Something dark, something strong. Something smooth. Give me one of your special vodkas, not the ones you keep out of you. I uh, understood, understood. I uh, will, we will do just that. And the person walks behind the bar uh, to a back room. And you guys are sitting there by yourselves for a couple minutes. Normally I'd press the issue on the waiting thing, but uh, this whole VIP room, part of the experience. Makes you feel important if you have to wait? Uh, less of that, more about the, uh, what's the word? The ambiance, the vibes. Oh, it's no corporate cantina, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, definitely beats one of those, I guess. And, uh, accommodations? Guessing it's gonna be a little bit nicer than, uh, shared bunks? You know it. All right. All right. About a minute and a half or so later, uh, the individual comes back and carrying a... It almost looks like a, like a sake bottle, uh, if you've seen the shape of those. Uh, a mixture between that kind of long snout and a tall gl- a tall bottle that you might see from a lot of like vodka bottles. But the bartender comes up to you. Uh, would this do, good sir? Uh, we have this one here, White Recluse. Koji will nod and just kind of reach his hand out. And she Koji hands it hands over. over. Koji, we're getting some feedback when your mic is on. Oh, shit. All right. And then for Sam, the person walks over to the counter and pulls off, pulls out a dark bottle. And this one seems, to, this one has like, what is it going to be? It's going to be like silver trimmed ribbons kind of wrapped around the bottle and there is a black ribbon that crosses the front label and it the label itself it just has black and black in the crisscross shape but they will pour a couple of glasses and she will also bring out three kind of shot glasses for Actually, I guess, how many, are you guys all at the bar counter? Or is only... There's three of us right now. I I think Maxine is there. Maxine and Dario? There's quite a few of us, never mind. Yeah, I I came along. After not really finding what I was looking for, yeah, I'm kind of hanging out, though, but not drinking. Okay, so she'll bring out uh, five glasses, five shot glasses. And Koji, you're still holding on to the bottle. But for Sam and Caden, here you go. These are quite strong, so we do recommend that you sip, but if you are feeling confident, then I hope this is satisfactory. And uh, for you, uh, as I understand, you are of the Akiyama family. It's uh, an honor to have you here, but I hope you enjoy your glass, and if you need anything, uh, do let us know. And she'll put down the five glasses and attend to the counter. Sam picks up his uh, shot glass. Sam, before you should share a drink, right? You know, mend friendships and all that. That's probably a thing, right? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right. I reach my hand out, hold it out to friends. Koji. Are you pouring glasses pouring for everybody? Or... Uh, yeah, Koji will pour glasses. Okay. okay. He's Ko- keeping the bottle for himself, though. <laughs> sure. Uh, Koji, I'm going to have you also give me a history roll. All right. Give me I thought it was going to be an athletics roll to see if he pours correctly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You don't pour with your fist? Whips the bottle across the room. Yeah. yeah. How strong? <laughs> so while that roll is happening, uh, that Sam... Is a one not natural okay. on the history roll. Sam and Kaden. So I was going to raise the glass that I already have poured, but if if Koji is pouring drinks out for everybody, then I'll obviously pour, pick up the same one that everyone else is picking up. Sure. 
Sam and Caden, uh, when you guys get your very dark, it almost looks like just black. Imagine a heavier Guinness, almost like it looks. <laughs> it looks thick and heavy, and is almost... that the same thing we drank at the station? <laughs> not quite, not quite. You you did drink something closer to Guinness, but this is this is like pitch black. It almost looks like uh, like squid ink, and it has a very odorous, pungent, heavy smell that is like taking a big whiff of gasoline. Whoa. So Sam and Caden, you notice that right away. And Koji, when you open the bottle and pop it, the this one in contrast is almost, it almost looks invisible. If it wasn't for the edge of the liquid sloshing at the uh, inside the bottle, you would almost you could almost see right through it if it wasn't for the bottle itself. And when you pour it, That's smooth. Jesus. it is very smooth. It pours smooth. It looks smooth and it has no odor at all. You take a, uh, you pour four glasses, Koji. Are you going to pour a glass for yourself or are you just drinking out of the bottle? Just drinking out of the bottle. All right. And Koji with your roll of a one, you frankly, uh, you probably just don't, you, as long as the the label, as long as the bartender brings it out and it's uh, claimed to be a top top shelf item, you probably didn't pay super close attention to brands themselves. But yeah, this looks this looks promising. As you pour out glasses for everybody, kind of hand it over, or slide it over, and you all have glasses. Uh, well, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna cast precision on mine and turn mine to, like blue and light it on fire. It's going to look cool as hell if it works. Okay. Play, play I'm going to need you to give me a arcana roll for this. Sure. Ooh. Uh, 17. Then I'm going to have you give me a D100. Yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> Uh, 84. 84. Right? Let's see. Oh, come on. All right, so with an 84. What's that? Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. The room oh, no. as Caden... I think this is the thing we had last time. As Caden does something with his glass, it begins to bubble slightly. And as it bubbles, almost like a chemical reaction, the liquid begins to shift into a almost translucent, uh, kind of like a, God, what is that? What is that kind of metallic look where it... Oh. Okay. It, it is that kind of chromey liquid, almost like liquid mercury. Like the T one thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically, ba like quicksilver. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a very interesting pattern that kind of forms as it begins to shimmer and glow blue. And with your second gesture, you create a flame, and a blue flame begins to flicker above it for just. A few moments to ca capture everyone's attention, but what happens next is there is a massive pungent wait, wait. odor. So, as the flame comes out, Sam starts to raise his hand, like oh, thinking no. about looking off, and then he stops. And Sam thinks this is himself. Nope, Sam, be open minded. <laughs> Understand that he's just uh, doing a little trick here, nothing harmful. And as the flames flicker and this odor begins to spread, you all smell that, again, strong, almost like burning gasoline smell spreading. It looks amazingly cool, but the smell that accompanies it doesn't. And about uh, several seconds later, it suddenly, the flames burst outward, and I need all of you nearby. What's up, everyone? Basically. Uh... Everyone nearby is going to get two points as of fire damage as the 
odor combusts and a flash of sparks explode outward from a, around and above the flame. And uh, Sam, in the middle of your thoughts, you get hit with this fire blast that just kind of poofs and vanishes, almost like if you've ever seen, I forget what it was, but you know, you know when people would douse their arms in like this uh, this fuel and burn it, and it kind of just quickly burns and disappears. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's that effect. It's rubbing like a little, alcohol. yeah, rubbing alcohol. Is that it? Generally. But yeah, two points of damage, and the barkeep kind of looks over. What? Is everything okay? Right, Is nobody right, hurt? Yeah, we're good. My bad. And she's keeping an eye on you guys as the damage is pretty minimal it mostly seems to be just kind of the air surrounding you that sparked for a brief moment and then settled down um, oh, doesn't seem to be any harm to any of the furniture or any of the upholstery and how uh, is koji's bottle your bottle is looking just fine okay but <laughs> with that yeah do you guys take a drink uh, koji's taking a big drink cool I, I I'm just gonna shift the the glass to the other hand, uh, make a couple quick gestures, and let my uh, painkiller injection do its thing. Okay. Sam takes a shot. This I can be on top of my game for whatever this is gonna do for me, <laughs> to me, not for me. Mm, Dario takes so a shot as cool. well. Fucked it up. All right. <laughs> Everybody, I mean, it looked really cool for a brief moment there, but everyone who took a shot is going to be giving me a constitution saving throw. Uh, Maxine, you can make that save with advantage. And Caden and... Caden and Koji... Well, let's see what your first roll is. There might be a second roll depending on how you roll. Um... Do I get advantage being a technician? Uh, not 20. <laughs> you will, yeah, you know what? You do get advantage. Yeah, I'll give you got advantage. the nat 20. <laughs> that's a six from me. Oh, I got a 21. That's not a six, dude. That's Koji. a nat one. Koji, of all people. <laughs> oh, is that a nat one? That is a nat one, dude. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, red. That is a nat one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, all right. Not one totally. of us realized is Dario is hard as fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is smooth. made from potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you all take a drink. Uh, so Sam, Caden, real quick question. Do you guys drink the black one or what Koji had poured? Uh, what Koji had poured yeah. since you pour for everyone. Okay, cool. So Maxine, your, as soon as you take your swig, the, with your 21, your, Injector kind of pumping your system here offsets some of the the effects, but it is strong as soon It has no odor as you all bring it up to your nose as you put it in your mouth It kind of tingles the inside of your mouth a little bit But you don't really feel anything until it drops into the pit of your stomach is when you finally feel some kind of a reaction and exhaling out a very heavy like lack of ox like all the oxygen had just been sucked away as you you exhale out the vapors but maxine you're feeling like someone just punched you in the in the square in the chest but you're all right dadio with your nat 20 much of the same however you take it down like a champ you don't even cough <laughs> and you let it sit and you're just like, probably needed that one. <laughs> Dario, Dario winks at Maxine, like kind of like, easy enough. Caden, you also, maybe it's because you've uh, had that one drink before that just caused you to knock the hell out, if I remember correctly. But this one causes you to stumble a little bit as yet take it down you're like oh this isn't too bad and again as soon as it hits the pit of your stomach you're just like oh sam seems like a pretty damn good drink it's hearty it's heavy um you actually feel 
a smudge dizzy after taking it. And um, you're like, oh, good stuff. But Koji, while everyone takes their shot and processes the lack of taste, but the heavy hit of the strong alcohol that it is, um, you all slowly realize that Koji is still bottoms up with the bottle in mouth and <laughs> chugging away as he all but finishes the bottle. Maybe there's a few drops left, but you slam it down at the desk and it is the most refreshing thing that you've had in a long time, Koji. It's been a while. That shit that you had at the space station, Bora station, was nothing compared to what you just drank. And um, in a little bit, you're probably going to start feeling that uh, as soon as you stand up. Hell yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Kaden, if you ever do that shit again, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. you. Maybe just not here where there's all these cameras. And next time, maybe without the spell, please. I'm still trying to figure everything out. I'll be a little more careful. I mean, you know, if you're the bartender, it'd probably look pretty good until the second half. But uh... I don't think I figured it all out. Speaking yeah. of the bartender, she's still looking your way. Uh, you can see, especially Maxine, you notice that almost like the seconds on a clock she's constantly kind of glancing your way um she's trying her damnedest to keep her expression pretty neutral and friendly but you see the look of concern and you notice that it not only lingers on Caden, but it also seems to be eyeballing koji pretty frequently as uh the longer time goes by the more kind of curious and concerned she is looking at koji who had just downed that bottle I'm going to look right at her and then wait till she notices. Is this is this something that Koji notices? Koji, give me a perception with disadvantage. At the moment? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Maxine, eventually she will... Wow. That's a nat one. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Koji. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Koji... <laughs> You're not going to remember the rest of tonight. Oh, <laughs> fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sam looking at, at Koji and how disheveled he is. Hey, Koji, you want to arm wrestle? Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Koji's feeling right back at home. But Maxine, <laughs> you linger on the bartender. She catches your gaze and quickly uh, averts it. As clumsily as possible, Koji slamming his arm down on the fucking bar counter. <laughs> Let's fucking go, Sam. <laughs> I was trying to make the toast special, and I fucked it all up. <laughs> uh, Sam downs his other drink, and it gets ready to play into arm wrestle. All right. <laughs> We're going to be doing some arm wrestling as uh, Sam. You pop up on the stool right next to Koji. Koji's ready to go. He's he's kind of got a an interesting expression on his face. But... <laughs> But Koji, you guys are going to be contesting uh, your yes. your um, strength rolls, and Koji, you're going to roll it with advantage. Oh, the drunk strength. <laughs> That's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening to you? I mean, we can spot it. Sam is going to remember this night forever. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who who's going to tell them to start? Ready, <laughs> ready, go. Immediately, Koji goes full send, ready to swing Sam across the room and break his arm in the process. But instead, he trips on himself and falls off Sam. You manage to smack his arm on the table as Koji falls onto the floor, stumbling. In, in complete disbelief, Sam, wide-eyed, looks around. Did anyone record that? Koji, so, so, so someone recorded that. The I fuck shouldn't was... even be able to beat you. Come on. Hold on. Hold the fuck on. Koji's gonna stand back up. Are the are the bar stools um 
Are they one of the ones that like come loose or are they kind of bolted to the ground? No, they can come loose. Yeah, yeah. I imagine when you got up, like you kind of maybe knocked it over and maybe you hit it when you went to make a move and tripped or something. Okay, okay. Koji's gonna um, pick it up and almost threateningly <laughs> at, like, like wield it as a weapon towards Sam. We're fucking doing that again. That didn't fucking count. I fucking fell. I'm, I'm bringing up my Omnia device to record it. Okay. Maxine, while you're recording, um, the bartender is in frame, and, and she's now just looking at the two of them and, and very concerned. Hey, 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 I'll make sure there's no messes. I'll, oh, I'll make sure that... Fucking mess. I'm going to make sure there's nothing unreasonable. All right. I'm going to have gonna... you both give me another... another At advantage again. And then uh, I look at uh, Koji and say, was this buying? I thought I was buying either way, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and let's see it again. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> that is a bad 20 totaling 23 koji uh you can pretty much do whatever you want in this scene how do you how do you how does this play out koji drops the stool arm slams down under the bar under the bar top and just fucking as hard as he possibly can to the point of almost throwing <laughs> sam just kind of like slam sam's arm down um, Sam's arm goes down and somehow his legs also go up. Yeah. <laughs> He's horizontal as his hand is falling. <laughs> oh my god. I can see it. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah. Koji on the second try braces himself and just as soon as Dario says go, swings his arm down and um, Sam the next second over, the whole room goes upside down. Very bizarre. <laughs> But uh, next thing uh, you know, you're on your back, and uh, Dario or uh, Koji has let go of your hand. Fuck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Drink so, uh, everybody, fucking shots all around. Bartender, give me another fucking bottle. I'm Sam upside down, <laughs> like his stool's up, but he's upside down on the stool. <laughs> <laughs> Reaches hands out. That was amazing. <laughs> Do it again. He's <laughs> <laughs> like that kid that got thrown off the like the high cliff into the, like the, the cushions again, again. Oh. Yeah, Sam is just wildly impressed. <laughs> Koji, as as you go to tell the bartender to pour another shot of rounds for everybody, she's about to protest, or both of her hands are kind of kind of in a, a stop or a uh, protesting posture, two hands up. But then you all hear a, a voice behind you all. Um, good sirs, the rooms are ready. Are you ready to... Is everything okay in here? Ah, finally. Let's fucking go, guys. Koji's gonna stand up as much as he can and kind of make his way. What rooms are they? Um, well, I have your card. Are you okay, sir? Ah, I'm fine. Better than I felt in... Kick out kind of counts on his hand. The week two looks back at the other guys how fucking long has it been too long he's he's enjoying himself i think that's all that needs to be said all right yeah. koji fucking okiyama who are you to ask him a person of his stature how he's doing yeah, i'm doing fucking great man hey, w listen this guy he's just doing his job right he's oh. making sure his esteemed guest is in good health and condition and we are assuring you sir that he is oh, that is uh, fantastic to hear and contrary to his words his eyes seem more concerned at the uh, as he kind of eyeballs of the room landing on the uh, the bartender as well but um he quickly recovers uh well esteemed guests uh this way gesturing back towards the door i will take you up to the upper floors and uh, show you your sweets can can we get another bottle of that uh and I'm, I'm just gonna point to the empty bottle that koji left behind uh, and then i'm gonna look at dario and say someone put sam in his place after a fluke so i think someone needs to put you in yours 
<laughs> I I will bring you another bottle. Uh, would you like one per room? Yeah, of course. I understood. Uh, this way, this way. And uh, takes you up to elevators and... A split second later, after you enter, it's you guys are up in the upper floors. Based on the number on the elevator, seems there are about 32 floors total, and you guys are up in the 30s. But in this floor, there is two hallways, one going left and one going right outside the elevators, and he leads you down the left side, which you will find two doors against each side of the hall and then one at the far end and as he stops in front of each uh these will be the five rooms uh, here are the key cards for each you simply tap at the sensor on the door and the door will open for you as he does so and the door just slides right open dario puts his arm around um uh around koji to kind of stabilize him and kind of like you know be there to support him he's kind of like Walking a bit like a penguin. <laughs> the hell are you doing, man? I I can take care of myself. I'm fine. <laughs> I got you, my friend. Let me make sure you at least get in uh, get in your room safely. Sam uh, takes out his like little device and scans Koji, and the screen returns. This person is drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Uh, Two hundred percent accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> but the. <laughs> Gentlemen, goes to each room, or shows you to each room, and they're all pretty close proximity to one another, at least the doors are, but once you get inside, it is a large, kind of almost penthouse suite, where each room has two bedrooms, one with a large bed, one with a double bed, and a large kind of living space with a uh, fireplace, or the digital fireplace, but there's a kitchen, there's another bar, uh, like a personalized bar, there are there is a like living area that has a very kind of asian inspired aesthetics and a nice view of fontaine out the windows wow i go to the kitchen is there food is there like pre-made food is there, is there like easy things like it just eat or is it all stuff we have to cook no, so when when you go to like the kitchen space, uh, it's more just like countertops. There's no it's like a kitchenette. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you want to order food, there seems to be a terminal nearby that has kind of room service style, like a menu that you can order food from, and it looks like they will send it to you. Uh, the gentleman also will explain kind of the, the process as he sees you all kind of mulling about and taking a look. Um, but he approaches you, Koji. Um, Mr. Akiyama, should should we will you be providing the payment uh, for your stay, or should we bill the Akiyama family as we do? Bill, bill it to my family. Uh, understood. It, uh, if you need anything, uh, do give us a call. the The terminals within each of these rooms will be connected to a VIP line, and um, if if not myself, one of my associates will uh, be, help you all as promptly as we can. Uh, yeah, where's the mini bar? <laughs> <laughs> we have, we still have these bottles here that he gave us. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sam looks at it, ugh, more potato alcohol. No, thank you. I go over to the mini bar. <laughs> when you go to the mini bar, it's actually, it actually looks like, um, it's actually empty, almost like a microwave, but there is a, but there is a terminal on the side that has a like a drink menu. Well, to, please tell me it's like a new pneumatic tube system because I think the other one's a little too advanced. The other option. <laughs> so you're telling me I should only get fizzy drinks? See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, though Sam will try to find like a decently aged like whiskey. Sure. Yeah, you'll find you'll find. Uh, it seems to all be bottles. But you're looking for a whiskey you punch it in and you hear a ding as you open the door and there is a chilled or i guess like a room temperature bottle that is now sitting in where previously was an empty space 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And this is how Sam ended up at AA meetings. <laughs> <laughs> but as you guys are all here, um, the gentleman looks like you guys are doing okay, and he will give you all a bow, and I will uh, be downstairs. Uh, enjoy your stay, uh, esteemed guests, and he'll leave you all be. This is like the easiest we've ever had it. Uh, we, we each have a spot like this. I, yeah, I got five rooms for us. Do we uh, need to get anything done tonight? Or are we just crashing over the night? Or Real quick. I, I, real uh, quick. Real quick. Uh, Caden, this space that uh, each of you get individually... Uh, this space alone is larger than the space that you have been in. Maxine, oh, this is probably the nicest place that you've ever been in. Dadio, back home, you probably had a very similar spacious location, but not nearly as luxurious. Mm -hmm. And Sam, you I don't think you would have ever been in anything this luxurious either. So with the exception of Koji, this is all very fancy for you all. Wait, 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 what of the human thing that you guys have? Is there a hot tub? Uh, that's a good question. Is there a hot tub? Oh, uh, that better be a fucking hot tub. Ding. <laughs> Would you like to activate hot tub? <laughs> yeah! As you say, yeah, the uh, kind of center lounge area uh, recesses and begins to fill with water and the kind of living space in front of the big window and the digital kind of fireplace area now is a indoor hot tub. You can't be serious. Koji immediately like rips his shirt off, kicks his shoes off and dives in. That's not a thing that people have. That's How about a how about a pool? I like look up towards the ceiling. <laughs> Ding, the pool can be found on the 4th floor. Oh shit, okay. That's not okay. That that's that seems pretty normal. I can't imagine if it just turned the whole place into one of into a pool. I, I was half expecting that to be honest. Mm. Uh, okay, hot tub, sweet. Um, is it, how big of a hot tub is that? Can we all fit? Yeah, it's it's pretty sizable. It's um, got to What what can I even use as a as a comparison? It is it's large enough to fit probably eight people. Oh shit, fuck, I'm in. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sam takes off his gear. <laughs> also, you do have five rooms, but you guys are all hanging out together? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Wait, it's, is it five bedrooms or is it five suites? Five suites is what was asked Jesus for. <laughs> 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 yep. So we never leave Fontaine again. We retire here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Akiyama money is probably enough to like fuel the rest of our lives, right? <laughs> oh, easily. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so yeah, hang out in the hot tub, I guess. Sweet. All right, there you go. I was not expecting to have such a, like, this is honestly not what I expected from Fontaine, guys. Uh, there you go. go ahead and grab a glass. Let's go. Let's do this. Uh, by all means, Maxine. And um, Dario looks in the cabinets to try to, or somewhere uh, laying about a uh, two glasses to find for myself and yeah. Maxine. As you're looking about for glasses, uh, you open a kind of chilled refrigerator type contraption, and inside you find that one of those um, vodka style bottles, the, the white recluse, is sitting in there. And you find in the cabinets, there are plenty of glasses. Shit. Grabs two glasses and uh, the, the bottle that's in there and brings it out. Cool. This is, wow. I was really stressed about being Fontaine now. This doesn't seem so bad all of a sudden. You guys don't know what, you don't want to know what the bill is though. <laughs> <laughs> Kaden, if we kept living in this, it would ruin us. It would turn us into monsters. Oh, I'm not saying it would, but I've literally never had a stay like this ever in my life before. I've never wanted to be a monster more in my life. <laughs> yeah. What are you calling me a monster? Uh, yeah, you Koji. don't turn into monster, you turn into Koji. <laughs> Koji, have you seen yourself in a fight? How else would you describe that? 
Actually, I haven't come to think of it. I think about it from the smaller guy's perspective. That's terrifying. It's a monster. Sam is stretching out his wrist and arm. <laughs> like, it just hurts. <laughs> <laughs> is that why I got so here? I'm gonna be Cody, honest. Yeah, I don't know what you just. Deep in thought. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dario. Dario goes to pour glass, uh, two glasses slowly from the bottle, and then hands one of them to, or at least pushes it across the table towards where Maxine's at. Yeah, I will take it up. Wait, does he do a cool like slide? Like the cup slides all the way down the table? Oh, like a bartender, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Like serving chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and hey, Dario, he... can you pass one over to me. Ah. Are you in a hot tub? <laughs> <laughs> Dario goes and finds another glass, prepares, and prepares it, but says, "This will be waiting for you yeah, wait, wait, whenever wait. you get out." D D Dario, uh, put it on Grey Ghost. Have Grey Ghost fly it over. <laughs> <laughs> And Dario laughs and says, ah, oh, he's snapping for the night. <laughs> but he raises his glass to Maxine, does a little cheers, and says, to, trust, to trusting each other. Yeah, I'll take that one. And a little clink of the glass. And takes, the, takes the swig. By the way, Koji, you said, uh, like, you ripped up your Are you, like, butt-ass naked right now in the hot tub? I imagine he's down to his boxers. Okay, okay. <laughs> He's a man of finesse. He knows how much to pull off. <laughs> Koji, what would you normally do back home? Um, if you went bathing, like at a uh, like a hot spring style, like hot tub. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Oh no. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I imagine Koji. I, I, I think, yeah, Koji would probably be bought us naked. Yeah, I think he would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You probably didn't even give it a second thought, considering you got those nat ones, you know. So. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Incredible. <laughs> Is that what you said, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what do you think prompted the whole monster discussion? Oh my god. <laughs> Is this this where you roll for dick size? Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 strength. It's your strength score in inches. Oh god! <laughs> Man, Maxine's god. got most of you guys beat. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god! No. Okay, okay. There's drinks to be had. Oh. You guys, oh, you no. guys get a fucking face palm out of that one. Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh. So, uh. Are we doing anything else for the night, or are we just, uh, crash now? Well, considering the, like, monster thought, I actually, Koji, I, after that comment, Koji is definitely, to those observing, completely and totally lost in thought. Um, and give me actually one second. I'll be right back. I've got, I'm going to go grab a coin. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh while he's doing that, my plan is to put Dario in his place. And with an arm muscle? And then if I make it back to my suite... You ready? Do do a sweep for bugs, and then go to bed. <laughs> Alright, Dragon, I want you to call this heads or tails. What, what is it for? Um, I, I will explain after, if that's okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh -oh. I think with, uh, we're gonna go with heads. All right, it's Tails. Um, Koji is gonna sit in the pool and just remain lost in thought. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically. when you guys yeah, are looking at Koji, he gets really quiet. He's probably like looking down at the water, but uh, yeah, very contrast, I imagine, from how he was not long ago. Um, Sam joining Koji in the hot tub after a brief moment of like just enjoying the water starts to have a heartfelt moment where he's explaining how I'm so grateful that you were backing me in a time where I was obviously wrong, super thankful for it, very <laughs> heartfelt speech the entire time, and then, <laughs> and then I look up and Koji's just like knocked out. <laughs> he's not, actually not knocked out, but not paying attention. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. But before we continue, Maxine Dadio, how about you guys do what you were planning to? Man, down those drinks. Oh, so we're just drinking. <laughs> That's my plan. Oh, okay, was it sure? But, but, yeah, listen, was you, it? Your 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 success in handling that drink was it was too smooth. You, you, you gotta teach you a lesson. Oh, Everyone who's been drinking tonight, with the exception of Koji, give me another con save. Uh, ten. Ooh, seven for Gladio. It's an eighteen. Oh. No constitution. It's a twelve. Jesus. All right. With the exception of Maxine and Sam, Dadio and Caden, as you guys enjoy the hot tub and, or at least uh, enjoying each other's company and, and drinking through the night as you all continue your dialogue, um, the two of you will be waking up in the current room, whereas Maxine and Sam, you will wake up in separate rooms. But is it is it possible when I'm back in my room to spend as long as I'm awake to like clean up my gear, uh, I don't know, wipe blood off and shit like that? Yeah, Sam, you'll be able to do that. Cool. Yeah. But while you guys Bye. are continuing to enjoy the hot tub, yeah, continue. Uh, after uh, a little bit of drinking, just look at Dario and then go over to Sam and say, listen, I would put any of you in your place brute force like koji but um i mean it wouldn't even wouldn't even be fair maxine. just gonna kind of flex a little bit maxine you're a worthy competitor yeah some say i'm the best around did you say sam's the best around the hell If you think that you could out drink me, <laughs> that's a laugh. Like the other guy who tried to drink with us. And I point to his, uh, Koji. Listen, I can't even believe that. That's. I thought he could hold his own, and if if it was that, and also you beat him at arm wrestling, I don't know what I would do. You all saw the first one. That's <laughs> clear, one. Clearly, we we all saw it. No, nah, photos were didn't happen, right? No, that's uh, that's I remember that. I mean, I got the recording of him beating you, so I, that that's all we've got on you know recording. You delete that one. <laughs> that's that's a biased news. How, how do you want to show one of the two? How about this? You and me right now. You beat me. I'll delete it. Maxine is getting feisty. If you lose, I mean, I need my price. Sam stretches his arm. Let's do it. All right. You guys are going to set up somewhere to do a little, again, arm wrestle, was it? Yeah. yeah. All and, right. Uh, before we do it, I, I pour another glass for each of us of this fucking shitty <laughs> potato alcohol. <laughs> All right. Based on both of your prior rolls, you can both give me a regular strength check. Sam, I'll even give you the option. Flesh or steel. And I'm just going to hold up my two arms that are very clearly not the same material. <laughs> I've never, I've never fought against steel in this way before. Let's do it. It's exciting. All right, I'll, I'll take the drink in my left hand and put up my right for an arm wrestle. Maxine, you roll <laughs> advantage. Can't wait to fail horribly. <laughs> All right, let's on Maxine. see it. How about you, Dario? Ooh. Fighting against machine arms are just real hard. <laughs> oh, got so many buttons to click. <laughs> Maxine's drunk in real life. Maxine, Maxine, you have advantage for your mechanical arm. Alright, uh, let me, oh, come on, get something you all loaded. 
<laughs> yeah, so Sam, when you go to begin, Maxine's mechanical arm doesn't even budge initially. And uh promptly, just slowly, I imagine. Presses uh the advantage. But that's uh good engineering. Listen, listen. Well, I mean, corporate butt stuff. I mean, I'm. Did you say you know, corporate what? butt stuff? Corporate butt. <laughs> the one thing, <laughs> the one thing, Koji snaps out of it for. Yeah. <laughs> and just, uh, you know, Dynasty, they can get the best stuff, and uh, you know, only the best for the best of the best, right? Does anyone else understand what the fuck she's saying right now? Uh, she's important. She's got good stuff. She's buzzing. I've got good stuff, and I kind of hate it because I don't trust it. Any of it. It all needs to burn. It needs new stuff to replace it. Would you get rid of your arm? If I found another one that I could trust. Like, what if this one tries to kill me in my sleep? Because I say the wrong thing. Has that, has that happened before? No, I don't know. Probably not. Not really filling me with confidence. I'm just saying, I don't know what they can do with it. And I don't... If if they're the ones that ruined everything, then I I, I don't know if... I, I, I don't know. I, it's not that I don't know. I know I can't trust them. If they burn down this whole place, I can't trust them. Yep. If I can't trust them, I can't trust the stuff they gave me. Having a uh, bionic arm, showing yourself in your sleep is actually very easy to, to program. It's not really, really assuring there, uh, sir. Uh, and here's the thing. They send people like me out on classified missions all the time. I mean, that's basically what we're all doing on this planet. There's one of us in each team to make sure these people do what they're supposed to do and don't do what they're not supposed to do. Yeah, I mean, like in that first pod we found, I mean, those guys capped theirs, but... I mean, we capped them in the end, so it kind of worked out, but... The point is, they're, they're always watching, and you're lucky that you got me. Because... I know that I can't trust them. Because they probably burned down my house. Was it just your house, or was it like your house with someone in it? Because that's a very different story. It was everything. And everyone. And if they did that, I've made a mistake. Has this been a... Um mission for you D did you find out they burned down your house after you joined or did you join it because they burned down your house i have been thinking about it since we talked to jack he he, he thinks they might have done it and i already thought they might have done it after i started putting things together and if i thought it and then he thought it there's something there so like again like your house burning down, it, it sucks, but there was, there's something significant about what was in the house? It's not the house, it's everything, the whole planet. Oh, the house is a metaphor. They did it. Maybe. And now, if they did... Now I'm tracking. While you're all talking, Koji, your surroundings are kind of passing you by in... Fast forward. It's almost like you being so deep in thought, everything else around you personally has slowed down, but the world around you seems to be moving more quickly. Things seem to be starting to blur a little bit. And within this tub with the aesthetic of Akiyama in this hotel uh, suite and much of the kind of scenery and the upholstery and much of the visuals here reminding you of home maybe you're getting a little homesick or maybe you're getting a little itch for um 
to get your mind off of things. It's It's been a while, and Koji, yeah. mulling over yeah. your thoughts, I imagine there's um, going to be a little bit of stray thoughts that come into that. At some point throughout you guys' conversation, Koji will stand up, go to his duffel bag, and shoot up some Psycho G. Psycho G? I forgot about that. But um, with the mix of the cocktail in a, in less than probably half an hour, Koji, you're probably going to pass out. Sounds good. Sam will get up, uh, gather all his belongings, and start to head out the door. And he'll say, um, Dr. Stuff, remember? Hydrate. See y'all tomorrow's. Do you head out. Doctor? Or is that like he's like a car guy? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, that's too far away when we were fighting people last, so I don't really know what you were all doing. I was focused on looking at something else. I, I honestly don't know. But uh, I should probably head back to my unit if I can find it. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Maxine, you can, you head out too, and I'll head out. I'll just um, make sure that Koji gets, you know, gets in, get rested, okay? Make sure he's yeah. gonna be and, and Dario, this, this is what I'm talking about. Like, if you can help me get better stuff. Well, Maxine, I can't really guarantee that. I built my my machine myself, but that was kind of, you know based off of something I already had. I can't really, without really knowing what, what you need, I can't really build a weapon out of nothing. That's but, what I was hoping John would be able to help us with. But, you know, we can talk about it more. Maybe there's something I could eat, you know, if it's something broken, maybe it's something I can fix. But to be able to create something or to be able to build something from scratch, I can't really guarantee it. But let's talk about it more tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, just gonna kind of turn, uh, start walking the door and just be like, it's, it's dangerous work. Stuff gets broken all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll take a look. If it bro if it gets broken, I'll see what I can do to fix it. The last thing most of you are gonna be able to remember tonight is gonna be Maxine kind of getting up and heading out, or at least making her way, collecting her things and kind of getting ready. And then from then on. The night feels long, and you all get some much needed rest. Go ahead. G G GM, uh, would it be possible? Because uh, there was, I guess, in kind of making sure that um, Koji's okay, I wanted to, you know, kind of get him situated for just a few moments. Koji, after Al you... Alone, yeah. After you uh, do your deal, are you going to be, like, in the bedroom or sofa nearby, or what? what would you think? Koji's going straight to the bed, kind of laying down. Okay. All right. We're going to let you guys all do your long rest. Dario, before we do, though, what is the intention behind what you wanted to do? I uh, want to talk to him. And in the st knowing that the state that he's in, I have a few questions. Ooh, tricky. I'm going to need you to... Hmm. You can ask can two ask. questions. Just trying to balance out the alcohol you guys are drinking. Okay. Yeah, you can get uh, you can get two questions in, and then we're gonna call the night. Okay. Uh, do do I um I guess am I just giving the general questions right now or? Do Dario, I, like, you you as as Maxine kind of gets up, Caden, you also get up and uh, kind of gather your things and take a get get comfortable on the sofa. Dario, you walk into the bedroom to kind of go talk to Koji. That's where you last saw him. And uh, what's what state would you say Koji is in? He's still kind of zoning, but he's visibly awake. His eyes are open. They're a little wide. Um, pupils are at this point kind of dilating because I imagine it's been some time since. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting yeah. up or laying down? Um, I'm going to go. He's kind of like 
sitting with his knees pulled up to his chest, not quite all the way, but like in that sort of sense with his arms kind of wrapped around his knees. How okay. erect is he right now? One hundred percent. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dadio, you walk into a, a very dark bedroom with the only thing really illuminating it is the city lights outside shining inwards, and you catch the silhouette of Koji sitting kind of on the edge of the bed with his knees brought closer to his chest, but not quite fetal position, more casual. But he seems to be zoning out uh either in thought or something else but yeah you you find koji as dario leans against the like the entrance to the room and well hopefully this doesn't count as one of the questions but yeah you holding out okay trying to see if he responds yeah yeah i'm okay koji i I lost someone very close to me, and I am trying to, trying to find them. It's one of the many. It's one of the. It's one of the reasons why I am here with you, and <laughs> frankly, joining you all for the main purpose of looking for someone that I've lost. Could just gonna kind of like look over to him. Did I? Did I kill him? Is that? Um. A blank look in his eyes, almost shocked. I don't know if that's the case, but one thing I will say, though, is upon looking into it, seems that one of the last things that they had gone to was to the Akiyama sector. Do you know why he would be going there? What the fuck are you asking me? I, I have no idea. I hope oh. I didn't kill your brother. Does the does the abbreviation DP SP mean anything to you? <laughs> Could you kind of giggle a little bit? <laughs> but I have no idea what that means, man. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. And tears in his eyes a little bit. He'll look over at you. I'm, I'm sorry, man. It's all right. I didn't mean. I didn't mean to hurt him. I didn't. I didn't want to fucking. I'm so. I'm sorry, man. And at that point, he'll just kind of like lean back, and he's gone. Dario, kind of defeated and disappointed, and not finding out what he needed he just turns around and exits the room and exits uh and goes towards his uh i guess his own suite okay do you put a bowl of water in his hand <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone will get their long rest um your memory the next day is going to be a bit hazy with the liquor that you all enjoyed and when the next morning comes, you all awake in the following. Sam, you find yourself in your own suite and you are woken up by a chime as somebody seems to be at your door. Uh, f- all right, all right, I'll be there. Eventually, I get up. Yeah, Sam. Go over there, open the door. When you get there, uh, one of the employees uh, has a white package on a trolley that they have brought up to you. Oh, so shit, yeah. We've uh, received this delivery for a Sam Stonewall, I believe. That is you? Yes, uh, that's me. All right. um, we will leave this here. Um, when you are ready to have us pick it up, uh, either let us know or we will clean it out during the day. I pulled the cart in. Yep. I slammed the door shut. <laughs> <laughs> you get that. Um, Mac Maxine, Maxine, you will also, around the time the you hear a door slamming shut, you wake up in your own bed, in your own suite. Caden, you will wake up on the sofa. Looks like you dozed off at some point. And Koji and Dadio, you guys wake up in the same bed. 
<laughs> and Koji's still butt ass naked, right? Probably. I don't think he would have gotten dressed. <laughs> But with that, before we jump back in, we're going to take a quick five minute break here and we'll be back very soon, everybody. So hang tight and we'll see you all in a bit.
all right we are back welcome back everybody um yeah after a quite the night of r and r as the party finally makes it to a fairly nice hotel uh, owned by well at least named after the akiyama family branch uh within the admin district of fontaine they all managed to acquire a or at least for the night a kind of penthouse floor uh, that they all have their own individual suite and after a night of drinking and enjoying a bit of a hot tub we are back as Maxine and Sam wake up in their respective rooms or at least uh, rooms of their choice and Caden passed out on the sofa while Dario who was speaking to Koji <laughs> thought that he was going to turn to leave but no nope. after a night of drinking Koji and Dario wake up or at least find themselves uh, in the bed, uh, sharing the same bed. Yeah. And one of them butt-ass naked. Yeah, well, Koji definitely did not get dressed before going to his room. So, <laughs> Koji, you in particular, don't remember anything after getting up to arm wrestle Sam the first time. Oh, my God. Oh, why the fuck am I naked? <laughs> also, you turn over and Dario's there. Probably, I don't know if you're still snoozing. I would be sleeping uh, uh, until... Until I get a, yeah. a reason to wake up. How the fuck are you in here? Is he saying it loud enough for me to wake up? Yeah. At this point, no. <laughs> okay. Koji, Koji, I'm going to have you give me a perception roll. That is a 20 not natural. Yeah. <laughs> a dirty 20. Yeah. All right, Koji, as you look around, you obviously spot Dario. Um, you spot that you are missing your clothes. You find yourself in a very nice room in a very comfortable bed, unlike what you've been experiencing for the past week. And probably after a rough week of kind of having to force sober yourself up, uh, having, you know, not regular ready access to alcohol, um, going hard last night kind of knock you on your ass, but outside you see a beautiful uh, The beautiful skyline of Aurora Green and the Fontaine high-rises and on a chair Opposite of the bed kind of off in one corner you find that your duffel bag sits there open and On the floor next to it a empty syringe of Psycho G Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense Oh, and after that, he'll go zip his duffel bag up. Or before that, like, grab some new clothes. Um, and put them on, and probably go wake Dario up at that point. Hey. <laughs> fuck you sleeping in the same bed as me for? <laughs> Why the fuck was I naked? <laughs> well, one of those I can probably answer. But the reason why you're naked, I hope it wasn't to, to please me in the case, but if so, I thank you very much. I... What? <laughs> Dario starts to collect himself, not really embarrassed by the situation, but um, at least gathers his things and says, Well, I guess we both need to be getting up in the morning, but... I slept well, so thank you very much. Dario, I'm gonna need you to You're give welcome. me a. Okay, you know, what? yeah, give me a, give me a deception roll real quick. Uh, normal. Yeah, normal. Wait, this is deception. Uh, uh, <laughs> three. Yeah, and, and Koji, I'm gonna have you give me an insight with disadvantage. Oh. Right. That's yeah. a 12. Koji, you are so confused until Dadio starts to turn. You see a smirk on his face. How are you getting mad? I'm still passed out on the couch, by the way. Oh, is Caden in here too? Yeah, I'm just sleeping on the couch. Caden is out. <laughs> yeah, he's in the lounge area. Passed out on the sofa. The, uh, the hot tub is still in hot tub mode. Oh god, the bill's gonna be fucking huge. <laughs> <laughs> we only have five suites and use three. 
<laughs> Dario heads to the kitchen and tries to um, prep some coffee for the morning. Dario, you get to the kitchen. There is no coffee, but on the terminal that has the drink menu, you can find uh, coffee as one of the options. And a moment later, it will appear uh, in the little door that you can open up where the drinks were being transported to. And a nice hot... Did you? Would you want a cup or a pot? Uh, we'll do a pot. All right. There's a nice piping hot thermal pot of coffee. Yeah, Dario pours himself a cup. Kind of looks out towards the, I guess the the open window that kind of looks out the city and just kind of just at peace with uh at peace with everything, but a bit um I guess uh how can I say it a bit at peace, but at the same time a little disappointed as well with um maybe what didn't happen yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> We won't question, say what though. Question but, mark? Yeah. Question mark? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> give me a. Still uh, standing in the same spot, confused. <laughs> give me a perception roll while you're standing at the window. Sure. Looking out, observing, ab appreciating. Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. No, it looks to be a beautiful day in Fontaine outside as you see occasional uh, flying vehicles whizzing by uh, within the city. And then looking down, you obviously see kind of the ants of people walking and milling about as well as some ground vehicles driving on the highways that you can. It looks very nice and peaceful out here. And just uh, continues just to look out, out towards, um, I guess, the sunlight. All right, but some time will pass, and I guess no one's waking up Caden. So, Caden, you'll naturally get up. And then after maybe another hour or so um, from Sam's early delivery, Sam, you'll probably start to naturally wake up. And Maxine, uh, I don't know you how you handled the uh, slam door in the room next door, but you're up as well. Um, Sam does want to put in a bunch of food orders, a little hair of the dog, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, like a refill for my flask because it's probably empty. Okay. Uh, more, more heavy drinks or whiskey, you said? Uh, hair of the dog is just like a little bit of alcohol to get you going after a heavy night of drinking. Yeah, but for your flask. Oh, yeah, yeah, more whiskey just like in the flask. Okay. I, I have to make a little checklist of how big this bill's going to be. <laughs> So you guys ordered whiskey. I know you ordered one the previous night too. You guys yeah. ended up getting six bottles total of that white recluse vodka. Yeah. Sam's food, food order. Answer for. <laughs> Probably comes up to like five silver. I don't know how much shit costs, but <laughs> let's uh, we won't we won't talk about it. There's no prices on the menus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. All right, and then you order like a breakfast spread. Yeah, yeah, some bacon, some sausage, some pancakes, you know, just a... Single portion ooh. or double portion? You know what, uh, we're gonna go single. Okay. It's gonna be a busy day. <laughs> be on our feet. Yep. Alright, what about the rest of you? I think, uh, after, like, getting kind of abruptly woken up by the, 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 the noise from uh sam's room um probably stay up at that point probably uh like go to like check the door initially uh you know look, look for a camera to see if there's like a means to, like look outside without opening the door uh there would be cool. yeah and then uh probably just start going about getting myself ready but keeping guardian prime within arm's reach at any point just in case you don't just leave it on your hip <laughs> guardian I mean... prime for those that don't know is maxine's uh, named pistol yeah clearly uh maxine just keeps a holster on even you know showering in the morning yeah you probably sleep uh... with it <laughs> Sorry, one other thing um i'd like to restock on rations to like 10. put it on okay. like yama family bill how many more do you need to do that six 
six. All right. Don't forget, don't you guys have a uh, couple crates of food as well? <laughs> All the Slim Jims we put in the back? Yeah, Slim Jims oh, yeah, and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> snacks that we, yeah. we, never, we never ask him to take it up in the room, so it's probably still in the car. <laughs> probably, probably. All right. Uh, so, wait, you said how many rations? Uh, six. That brings me back up to ten. All right. We'll just call them like, uh, like travel meals, MREs. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think after getting everything ready, uh, probably going to see if I can go get into Koji's room, or suite, rather. Okay, um, so you all have your own key cards to your rooms, uh, Koji probably has the one for this one, so when you go to try to get in, it is not going to open, but Dadio, you will hear the door rattle. Uh, looks back. Try to see where that rattle comes from. Looks like someone tried to open the door. Oh, goes to goes to try to open it. Yeah, when you go to open it, you see Maxine on the other side. Well, good morning. Probably say you know same you know khakis as, as before at this like a uh, <laughs> bundle of clothing that I got from. Uh, from Dynasty, but uh, you know what? I'm I'm wearing that uh, that shirt that Caden fixed up as well. Red and black. Cool. Uh, Did you remember uh, to make note that that had a? St I believe it was a plus one. Caden, do you remember what I said? I don't remember if it was. I think it was, it was like a, AC, well, but the yeah, chest. So, yeah. yeah. I don't believe I did have that. Yeah. So if you ever get shot square in the chest, it will provide a plus one to your AC. Fantastic. Um, yeah, seeing uh, uh, Dario at the door, uh, I say, hey, um, I had a question for you, but probably shouldn't talk about stuff in the hallway. Yeah, I mean, do you want to come in? Uh, that was the plan. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, what's up? I'll step in, um, and when, once the, the door is shut and say, are drones a big, prominent technology in Skara? Mm, I mean, we, I mean, it's enough to, to be able to make me, um, I guess, learn about them, and yeah, they're pretty widely available, at least uh, across the population, if you have enough money. That, uh, that one group, based on their name, I'm guessing, you know, clearly gotta be from there. They, you know, if they used a lot of drones, or other airborne vehicles or anything in their work, you know, the kind of thing you might use to spy on someone. Mm hmm And if so, are those people looking for you? Not that I'm aware of. At least they haven't told me. At least I haven't and have, have a need to be afraid of uh, from anyone like that. Quick question. Dario, are you... I guess for anyone tuning in, Maxine, are you referring to which organization? Uh, Don of Sakara. Gotcha. And Dario, you got that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I must have misheard that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's clarifying. Mm hmm. I will. Uh, that's a bit. Uh. Well, there's a bit of deception with that, with what how I'm saying it. Maxine, what is your insight mod uh my insight mod is uh plus three dario i'm gonna need you to roll deception if you are deceiving okay. with your reply no nope. 17 yep maxine dario's feigning ignorance and you are none the wiser I don't know what it was, but I, I just had a thought. I don't know. I, I was thinking about the stuff that you made and 
something I was thinking about that flyer that was over us that was clearly tracking us. And I thought, maybe what if it's not who we... I thought it was before, and it was instead this other group that I only learned about recently. And Maxine, I think you are very wise to be able to ask that question. Like I mentioned before to Jack, I do not trust that group. I don't trust what they do, but I have no reason to believe that they would know who I am yet. So I'm not fearful of them at this time and found no reason to feel threatened by them. Rather, they should feel a little bit nervous of who I am, or at least how close I might get to them. That's a lot. That's... <laughs> that's like... Thoughts I've had in my head kind of a lot. And I think it's funny how a lot of us, though very different, <laughs> happen to be here for a very similar purpose. <laughs> Seems a bit ironic how we're all supposed to be banding together for some cause for some big corporation, but seems like they don't know that they're putting something, some opposition against them by putting us all together. But it's something I have at least thought of. Yeah, that's a funny I mean, thought. Something like that, that's, that's for sure. Sam seemed real. Fight the machine the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now that you mention it. Oh. Uh, how's everyone doing on this side? I, uh... Ah, sleeping as well as they can be, I think. I mean, I, yeah, I do believe having a finally a good night's rest was probably something that we all needed. <laughs> Seemed uh, at the end of that, <laughs> that experience with, uh, what John didn't seem to go well, and I think we all deserved a little bit of a bit of a rest, especially if all, after all this time we've been together. Mm -hmm. While Maxine and Dottie are, are having this conversation, Caden, you're stirred awake by their conversation in the living area, and you're pretty much coming around and awake at this point. Koji, after you get dressed, you'll eventually make your way. Um, you guys might even smell uh, coffee in the air. I could use some of that. And he'll go over and pour himself a glass. What are we all doing here? Did we... Did we all crash here last night? I... I mean, I... I've been up, I had a shower and everything. Yeah. Not here, I was in my own. What time is it? Oh shit, we slept in. Oh. We don't have a schedule to keep, so... This is... From being on the road, it was kind of, you know, get up at dawn, go to bed at dusk. It's a little weird to not be on that kind of schedule. Yeah. Who has more food? He wanders over to the kitchen. The kitchenette, I guess. As Caden approaches, Koji will kind of look at him. I don't like beat the fuck out of you last night, did I? Uh... No? Alright. I don't think I did. I know that's what was going through my head when I chugged that fucking bottle, but... <laughs> I'm gonna, like, touch my face and see if there's any sort of spots. No, nah, no, I, I, I think I'm good. Alright, and I'll kind of clap him on the shoulder. Caden, you will feel some rough edges on your facial hair, though. Looks like they were singed oh. or something. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, that, that happened. Uh, yeah, it's just about to start eating, and, uh, yeah, get ready for everyone else to join. Actually, everyone's here now, so, right? There's so, not anyone you know, Sam, Sam Sam's enjoying his meal. So, Caden, you want to order some food is what I'm hearing. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I thought he ordered a portion. Uh, no, he's in a separate room. Oh shit, okay, sorry, I didn't- 
I have a super nose where I. I <laughs> you smell you uh, smell coffee. It reminds you of food. Yeah, you want to order some sure. breakfast too? Yeah, yeah, I'll order some breakfast. One portion when or for the group? When Sam's done eating, if no one comes to get him, he's just gonna do like practice swings with his warhammer, just like in the <laughs> area, slow swings, just thinking. How the heck did I miss? Yeah, he's gonna sit on the and like practice on it. Yeah. How did I miss? <laughs> what could he be referring to? Yeah, uh, I'll get food for the group. Food for the group. Alright, that's gonna be two portions then, so. Okay. You all relax in the morning, get caught up, let your mind kind of clear out, enjoy probably the hardiest meal. Uh, with the exception of Sam and Koji, who managed to enjoy a meal without their group once already. And, um, yeah, uh, eventually, Sam, you got you will finish your kind of practice swings and mulling about, and you'll regroup with the others as you are all now either in a single room or getting ready to depart, heading towards the elevator. Your call, but anything before you leave the, uh, the penthouse suites. Okay. After we eat, or after I finish eating, go over, knock on Sam's door, and get him. Uh, uh you, you no. You alive in there? No housekeeping. I'm not housekeeping, Sam. Oh, oh, Gaden. Yeah, hold on. Um, in a go over, I'm opening the door. Good morning. Good morning. You you coming over to? I guess it's Koji's room. We're ha we're all uh, we're all having like a I guess a morning thing in Koji's room. Uh, <laughs> I stand between him and the food so he doesn't see it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to join you guys. Just give me a minute. <laughs> and I don't then, eat, so I don't care about it, but you don't know that. I, I close the door and it went up. I'll be right there. I close the door. And as the door is closed, you hear like clanking and dishes <laughs> just like piling up. <laughs> uh, but Sam does eventually make his way over to Koji's room. Yeah, you guys are all there. So, I had something I wanted to mention. This, um, this, this driver, Karen, I wanted to see if there was, uh, I was thinking we should look, see if there's a record of, of, um, tampering or anything. With, with the drive we took from John? Yeah, see if there's anything on it that would show that anything has been done with it. Like, previously or after, like, there's... You mean afterwards? At, at, at all. Anything uh, that these people could look at and get some funny ideas. Uh, yeah, how, take your... Dude, go ahead, try I I don't know how to do that. Do we have a, anyone? Dario, you know how these things work? I uh, tried to do it last time and was a well, bit we unsuccessful. Last time. We should have different. We're trying to what? See if it's been tampered with, copied previously. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, look, looking for any records it has of uh, any interactions, any tampering, any copying, or anything. And we're trying to plug this thing into a device to try to read that information. Uh, that's what we'd have to do to access it then. Yeah, just uh, offline. Good, Ken. Yeah, I suppose we're gonna have to find some type of device that can read it, because at least looking at it, I couldn't figure it out on how to connect it to my my own device I suppose uh can take a look at it at least and see if, I don't know if I can figure anything out yeah do we want to try to head to a if there's like a PC cafe or something that has something that has computers that we can connect the the this uh, drive to, I'm sure we could try to fi uh, figure out if it works and try to find the information you need. 
does um when we if if there's a how can i say is there like a computer lab accessible within the uh, within this hotel can i try to f uh, figure out if there uh, if, if that's available on this premises you could do you need to fax something why do you need a computer <laughs> lab <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's go get a let's go get a quantum computer, supercomputer, just to do the work. Let's just go find the core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this entire campaign, we'll go to find the 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 core. Just been a like, pamphlet <laughs> here all along. <laughs> like, oh, we found a supercomputer. We'll finally crack this hard drive we've been hauling around for five years. So, how do you guys want to go about this? I guess we need some sort of interface, so like a computer. Hey, can I, can I take a look at it and see what we need? Sure. Uh, oh, yeah. can, can I assist? <laughs> sure, Maxine. I'm gonna have you give me a science roll. Normally, Sam, you had already attempted this once before, so I'm gonna have you give me another one okay. at disadvantage. This is the, the hard drive data thing. A hard drive, yeah. No, I I haven't attempted copying it. I took the machine. You guys have yet to figure out how to connect to the damn thing no it was just dardo and just uh kaden right you, you you're not even at the copy part yet i, th I think what he's saying is he hasn't he hasn't himself directly interacted with it yet you, you did when you were trying to steal it or take it from gina yeah but you make an you hmm. have a role disadvantage because you tried this already but he hasn't that's what he was saying no no i'm saying that when when you were at uh, grime shop and Gina had run out you were uh, you were scrambling to try to figure out how to connect yes. to the device mm. yes so what's going to make you any wiser to try it again now because I've tried it before <laughs> <laughs> alright both of you guys give me a, a silence roll that's an 11 it went about as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know what you were expecting but uh, Maxine the one thing that you are going to notice um, right away now that you have finally have had time to take a closer look is that this is this is a bit older technology uh, and having been with Dynasty, you're well aware that this is this is like somewhere in between what the current technology today would be in the game versus uh, way back in the past, like there's these things called solid state drives. Uh, this is something in between that and you need some kind of proprietary connector to a terminal uh, a lot of terminals might still have a connector that could access this drive uh, question is would they have one here and question is where are you going to store this data once you gain access to connect to it but currently this device itself does not appear to be compatible with the default connector that can come out of your uh, Omni device. Oh shit. I don't want to go to an antique shop, find a terminal. It is, it what about the the library? We knew John was old school, but this is this is too much. <laughs> like, at least with paper, you can pick it up and you can see it. This is this is security through obsolescence. <laughs> well, I guess the thing too is like he had physical copies of everything. Can't we just copy the physical documents and just give them the hard drive? Do we have physical copies, or do we just have the drive? No, no, he gave us the physical copies. No, she brought, she she brought it out to the desk. I don't remember anybody oh, saying fuck. that you took it. You took the drive. I don't think anyone touched the papers. Fuck, you might be right. Okay, I, I remember that now. I think I was under the assumption that the idea is that we were taking it. I thought so, too. When it was given to us. Yeah, but things went a little south. So well, we my my thought was, shop. yeah, my thought was, they they bring out the papers, we take the papers. Not they bring out the papers, 
And then we sit there talking longer. And where are you putting it though? Because it was a, it was a stack. She she brought out like their three thousand page contract, if you recall. You're at three thousand. Oh yeah. Contract. Yeah yeah. <laughs> it's a fair point. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I so I am signing because I assume we just took it. She yeah again again where where you. Yeah okay well we can talk about it later um but a note mm -hmm. is. I was very specific with the size of the stack for a reason. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because that's going to change what we do quite drastically because we have to go get those if we don't have those already. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to let us back in at this point. So we're going to hold up Grime Shop. We're going to burn it down. We're not going to burn it down. We're, we might have to rob him for his own good. Hey, Sam, we need a stealth mission. Um, I don't know about you guys. I'm very good at stealth missions. Yeah, me too. No, like we're doomed. No, you too. No, uh, me. I am. <laughs> Not you. You break things. You smash things and fix people. All right, out of character here. Koji is actually proficient in stealth. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you can't That's get hilarious. caught if no one's alive to report you. <laughs> That's... Koji, Koji has proficiency in stealth because he seems so natural, no one questions him. <laughs> I own this building. Acts like you belong. Yeah. Sam, you don't want to know how well I understand what you just said, but... Okay, we'll have to figure out whether we have this paperwork or not, but until then, if we get the paperwork, we could just hand over the hard drive. Who gives a shit? Um, yeah, yeah, that might work. We kind of probably should give that back to John because it has more than just the information we need on it. See, that's why I thought when we were talking to them, the logical thing for them to do would be find something to put it on, give us that, and then just scrub their drive. But then, yeah, that's what like that's that was like, they're just like, now nah, we'll give you the whole damn thing. Oh, people. At this, at this, this is why uh, I don't do the work where I interact with the people. I do the work where I'm 300 feet away at, at, at a minimum. So I think we need to come up with a decision here. We and have to as go you guys to... See, as a team. Um, do we go back to Johnson now? Do we go and copy the stuff we need and maybe wipe it off this hard drive and then give that back to him? Or do we just go straight uh, and turn it in? Well, if we well, go and get the contract, then we don't need to make a copy, right? Yeah. Because we'll just have the thing. And if we leave it in their hands, they're going to do something stupid with it. That's going to get them killed. If we go and turn it straight in, um, we should not mention that they have a paper copy. Obviously. All right. That could work. Yeah. So, real quick, just to recap, you guys are planning to go to John's or to Nero? I, th I think I am in favor of going to Nero and turning in the drive. I am also in favor of going to Nero. And then thinking about step two later. <laughs> Koji is down for whatever, so long as he gets to punch somebody eventually. <laughs> Dario is um, up with the group. All right. I think with that, we have a majority, so you all prepare to depart. Koji, as uh, you and the group get down to the lobby and prepare to leave, there is a couple individuals there waiting for you all as well, just to bid you uh, thank you for your stay and a farewell. Looks like Caden's internet just died or something because he just <laughs> dropped for no reason. And um, yeah, you all make it to your vehicle and are getting ready to head out to the Nero Trade Company, which we will continue with next time Yay. on Horizon Exploration. Good fun. Yeah. Good session. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting this to be 
such a uh, whimsical downtime session, but uh, it worked out for the better because... Are you going to get to anything you have planned? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. Usually I plan like three directions you guys could go for, and uh, if you wanted this to... This the fourth? Yeah, if you guys want to lounge about, <laughs> I am all for it. So yeah, don't mind me. But yeah, good stuff. What'd you guys think of your time? <laughs> you, you plan for shipping Dario and Koji? Holy shit, that's I next know. level. <laughs> tell, tell, uh, Dragon, please tell your viewers to send their fan fictions. To, uh, <laughs> if you want to leave the email address for that at the P.O. Box, we're looking forward to seeing it. We love the fan mail. Man, I like how Dario defaulted to being pleasure, not doing the <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. That was that was a lot of fun though. I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, I had a blast. Yeah. You and I both Koji. <laughs> <You and I. laughs> I do also find it pretty low-key hilarious how Sam is uh, apparently good at everything. He, I don't know if you guys knew this, but he has ma he has mastered every trade. <laughs> Uh, did I miss something? I'm back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just uh, we're, we're wrapping up for the night. We're going to okay. be continuing to the Narrow Trade Company next week's session. Have a good night, Sam. And um, yeah, we'll be calling it here. So thank you, everyone who tuned in. Thank you, everyone who's watching after the fact. And we will be back next week with Horizon Exploration Episode 20. So till then, see you all next time. And as always, take it easy. Bye. Have a good one. Peace. Peace. Yeah.